Yo, yo, how's it going guys? I've been wanting to do a fixed gear conversion on a retro mountain bike for a bit of time now. And I finally found this old Peugeot, which I think will work out quite well, uh, as it's got these semi-horizontal dropouts and it's got this really sweet looking geometry. It's an old Peugeot black rock, chromoly tubing with Peugeot's direct brazing system. It's actually the same as that Peugeot road bike I did a conversion on. Some of you guys might've seen that. But yeah, really keen to see how this bike turns out. So let's crack on with it. So just a little tip, um, if you have or you're looking to buy a Peugeot, um, they usually have pretty odd seat post sizes. So luckily this bike came with the original one. As you can see it's 24 millimeters, which is a pretty weird size. So it can be pretty hard to find a replacement.
So there was a little moment here where I thought these dropouts weren't going to have enough room. Um, but luckily they just had these plastic insert kind of spacer things. Sometimes they don't have enough room and these little removable bits are a part of the dropouts, like solid steel. So in some cases you might be able to like cut it out, grind it back, but in this case they're removable, so pretty stoked. So the frame's all stripped down now. It's pretty grubby. It's probably got quite a few years of dirt and grime on it. A little bit of surface rust, nothing that I'm too worried about though. The paint job's far too rad to sand back, so I'll just clean it up the best I can and we'll see how it turns out. So I'm just using a hairdryer to heat up the stickers. Just makes it that little bit easier to remove them. So on the little smudges, I'm usually like little paint marks. I just use a little bit of the polish, give it a little scrub, um, clean it up and usually does the job. So you have a few different cheap options when wanting to run fixed gear on a mountain bike. You can space out a traditional track hub um, or you can use a six bolt disc brake hub. So this here is a Surly hub. It's got a single speed thread on one side and a disc brake mount on the other and it's 135 millimeters wide and it's also a solid bolt on axle as you don't really want to run quick release on fixed gear. So I've picked up this Velo Solo 15 tooth bolt on cog. Um, there's a few different brands out there that make these but this one will do the job for me. The original rims on the bike were Araya, so I picked up this Araya TM840F double wall 26 inch rim that I'll lace up to the Surly hub. I chose this hub and rim so I could use the wheel for like as many different setups as possible. And so I could run it as a single speed with a disc brake, or single speed with a rim brake, or fixed gear with a rim brake, or flip flop single speed fixed. Um, but in this instance, I'm just going to run it fixed. I've gone with some DT Swiss Champion spokes with 14 millimeter brass nipples. So hopefully the wheel will come out super solid and last me a while. wheels all laced up now and all trued. Um, this, this bit might look a little bit odd but it's actually a good little tip. Um, I'm basically pre-stressing slash kind of bedding in the spokes. It means you'll less likely have to re-true the wheel after your first few rides as the spokes will already be bedded in. So now moving on to the seat post, it's got quite a few rust stains, marks and scratches on it. So I'm just going to use some sandpaper that will remove most of them and then finish off with a bit of polish.
So just moving on to the headset parts now. Just chucking them in a container, using a bit of degreaser and a toothbrush just to give them a good scrub and clean. Do that a few times, um, get all the grit and old grease out, and yeah, should turn out pretty nicely. So these are all the cleaned up parts, as well as some new parts that I'll be replacing. First off is this really sweet quill to A-head stem adapter. It allows you to use a threadless A-head stem on a threaded setup. So that's pretty sweet. Got some nice fun fat boy bars. Um, got these Sake SX cranks with a BMX 39 tooth chain ring. Um, I'll also be replacing the saddle with this pretty sweet turbo. Um, that should suit the build pretty nicely. And for tires, I've gone for some Maxxis DTH 26 by 2.3 tires. So yeah, super keen to see how this all turns out. So let's start the build. So this is where a little bit of trial and error comes into play. Um, you may need a few different bottom bracket lengths to figure it out. You want to get a good chain line and also crank clearance on your chain stays. 
So I'm going to start off by using this 117.5 um, and I just loosely fit it to test fit the cranks to check the clearances. I mean, it looks like the drive side is fine on this, um, but the non-drive side is way too close to the chainstay, it's almost touching. So if I was to tighten on the cranks, it would push it all the way to the chainstay. So yeah, unfortunately I don't have a longer bottom bracket on me, so I've managed to pull these Sagino messenger cranks I had on my GT, and so I'll try test fit these to see if they're any better. And as you can see, they have way more clearance on them, which is perfect. So I'll just use these ones. The chain line looks good as well. I just looked down from the rear cog to the chain ring to check. It's a few millimeters off, but it's nothing that will cause any issues. So I was a little bit worried about the size of the cog to begin with. As you can see here, the, the bolts are running super close. If not, they're touching the chain at the moment. I don't think it's too bad, but because the cog is so small, I think it's just running way too close to the bolts. So ideally I'd have a bigger cog or um, I could swap out the bolts, but I don't have any other bolts that would have a smaller head than that. So I think I'll run it for now. I'll see if there's any extra noise, but she'll be right. And that pretty much wraps it up. I know I always say this, but I'm actually really stoked how this one's turned out. I've been wanting to do this build for a very long time now, and to finally be able to see it completed and also ride it, it's pretty awesome. Also super keen to test out the rear wheel, see how well the disc mounted cog holds up. The paint job is definitely my favorite part about this bike. It always surprises me how much a bike can be transformed with just a little TLC. I think it's time to take this beast for a rip.